Why France is making the largest nuclear fusion reactor. Why was ITER built in France? How does nuclear fusion work? The future of fusion. Star power fusion. The greenest source of energy. In a world of people whose greatest achievement was once the wheel, humanity has come as far as harvesting energy from fossils and incorporating it into almost every aspect of the modern world. Although the world benefits from non-renewable energy like such for some time, it seems to progressively do more harm than good to the planet. From harmful pollution and everyday inconveniences to global warming as a result of greenhouse gases trapping heat within the atmosphere, the future of the planet is at high risk just so you could turn on the TV in the background while scrolling through your phone. But what if instead of being reliant on limited resources of energy that will eventually run out, humanity uses the almost eternal amount of power from a star? While there are billions of energy-producing hot gases in the universe, what if Earthlings could finally create their source of carbon-free green energy and solve one of science's most intractable problems? Join us as we uncover the future of fusion inside the world's largest fusion reactor, ITER, because the power of summoning the energy of a star is closer to reality than you might think. ITER Initiated in 1985, 35 countries signed to collaborate on one of the world's most important science projects. The European Union, United States, China, Russia, and India are among the stakeholders who are bound to receive the experimental data and the intellectual property of ITER in hopes of investing in renewable energy and fulfilling their treaties on climate change. In the ITER scientific installation in St. Paul Let's Durance, France, is the gigantic 23,000 ton, 830 cubic meter tokamak. This nuclear fusion reactor would be eight times larger than the current largest operating tokamak, Europe's JET and Japan's JT60. Both only measure 100 cubic meters each. The tokamak building would be slightly taller than Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The complex nuclear reactor would consist of 10 million parts, outsourced from all around the globe to the nearest Mediterranean port, some as far away as South Korea. Some would be as heavy as 900 tons, as tall as four-story buildings, 9 meters across and 33 meters long. The reactor's 18 D-shaped toroidal field magnets, each weighing 310 tons, requires 100 kilometers of niobium tin superconducting strands. Such a large-scale project would require $25 billion, although others have cynically estimated it to be higher, at $65 billion. Inside ITER From the outside, it looks like any other cluster of industrial-looking buildings, but inside is the most ambitious science endeavor of this time. Scientists and engineers are creating one of the hottest and the coldest places in the universe at the heart of a 180-hectare site. The reaction chamber and the world's largest refrigeration unit, both to house and sustain a star to harvest unlimited energy. Efficiency and Sustainability Conventional nuclear reactors rely on nuclear fission, where the nucleus of an atom splits into two or more nuclei and releases a large amount of energy in the form of heat and radiation in the process. Although uranium is the most widely used fuel for most nuclear power plants, a ton of which could generate 40 million kilowatts of electricity, it is a non-renewable resource. ITER, on the other hand, is designed to replicate nuclear fusion to produce neutron radiation. Inside the reactor, hydrogen isotopes are squashed together forming helium atoms and releasing energy-filled subatomic particles called neutrons. The main fuels needed for nuclear fusion are tritium and deuterium from hydrogen and water, which is renewable and does not emit greenhouse gases in the process. A challenge is that the only way atomic ingredients of fusion would not repel each other is in the core of stars that have a huge gravitational force and a temperature of 15 million degrees Celsius. Doing this on a small planet that has way less gravity than a star would be trickier. But ITER seems to have decoded the conditions that would make nuclear fusion possible. First, the temperature inside the reactor should be 150 million degrees Celsius. Secondly, the plasma needs to be of a certain density, and it needs to be confined for the power generator to work. ITER will trap these matters within a strong magnetic field inside a donut-shaped magnetic confinement called a tokamak. Designed after the original tokamak developed at Kurchatov Institute in 1968, 
the ultra-strong magnets of Eater's toroidal coils will work to create heat and pressure in a vacuum, turning the hydrogen fuel into plasma. Some essential elements for Eater, such as superconducting magnets and cryopumps, need to be cooled to certain temperatures to produce and sustain plasma that is way hotter than the sun's core. To obtain this temperature, a steady flux of cryogenic fluid circulates Eater cryolines, a high-technology piping network. Meanwhile, the scorching heat contained in the reactor would be absorbed by the three cubic meters of water per year supplied by the local Verdun River. The low-level radioactive waste from the nuclear fusion plant would be processed and stored on site to prevent the spread of contamination. When successful, Eater's use of nuclear fusion would be four times more efficient and sustainable than the conventional nuclear power plants in operation, and tens and millions of times cleaner and more sustainable than burning fossil fuels for electricity. Eater's mission. As of now, every fusion reactor consumes more heat than it produces. Eater aims to produce 500 megawatts of power with only an input power of 10 megawatt input. This would release astronomically more power than JET, which only had a net loss of 8 megawatts when it set the record of producing 16 megawatts from 24 megawatts of heating power. Aside from energy production, ITER is determined to set the stage for future fusion power plants and burning plasma, breed tritium in a vacuum vessel, and demonstrate the characteristics of a fusion device. Updates on ITER Closely being monitored by France's Nuclear Safety Authority, ITER continuously addresses the concerns of the regulator to prevent any possible harmful environmental impact of the reactor. Since the work started in 2007 and the 50% completion of construction in 2017, ITER remains in progress. The rest of the world awaits the first plasma test scheduled for 2025 and the full reactor test in 2035. So far, Harnessing the power of a star is something we have only seen in movies, but the world's greatest minds are trying to turn it into reality. Has science gone too ambitious? Or is ITER the solution to humanity's great dilemma on energy sustainability and climate change?